Welcome to part two of the video. I told you I was going to plot graph, so that's what we're going to do right now. We are to plot the graph for the readings, for the observations we got, okay, in part one. So these are the readings we got in part one. Okay, we are going to plot the graph of u against uh, u on the vector axis against v on the horizontal axis. So that is what we are to do right now. Uh, so we are plotting this on the vertical axis and we are, we are plotting u on the vertical axis and v on the horizontal axis. So what do we do first? We get the scale. So what is the scale of the graph? Hmm? The scale. This is on the horizontal axis and this is on the vertical axis. Alright? So you can see that the, the, this one did not start from 0, it's not near 0. So we can start from 40. Hmm? We, we, our zero point will be 40 at the origin. Why here we can start from zero? Because we are not going to start from anywhere, okay? So we can start this from zero, but this cannot be started from zero. So let's take our, uh, we, we can use one CM here, okay, to represent two CM. One CM on the graph can be used to represent two CM. Why here one CM can be used to represent uh, five CM, okay? So let's do that right now. Let's take this, this scale for the vertical axis, all right? For the vertical axis, we put our line here. Let's take this second line. Remember your graph must cover two third or one third of your, of the space, so, on your graph. That's what we are doing right now. We go down and do it properly. Okay, we do it this way. Then we come here. And plot, don't forget, we have 42, 44, 48, 50, 52, 54. So we raise it up a bit here. Let's raise it this way uh, from here. So we rule our lines carefully. Rule our lines carefully. Alright, so rule it carefully. We put our lines carefully. Okay, you can see this is the U as this. Once you are done, don't forget that your, your graph is a vector quantity, so it has an uh, arrow at both the vertical and the horizontal. Now U, U is, is in CM, so label U in centimeters. Okay, and here label your V in centimeters. Your V in centimeters. So this is how you label the vertical and horizontal axis. Alright? So let's start from here. Don't forget that the vertical axis, we are starting from 40, 40 is at zero. Then the horizontal axis is zero. So this is how we begin. And here we have five. Five point zero. Here we have ten. Point zero. Here we have fifteen point zero, followed by twenty point zero, then twenty five point zero, then here we have thirty point zero, here we have thirty five point zero, while here we have 40.0. Okay, this is for the horizontal axis. I hope you can see it carefully. This is for the horizontal axis. Then for the vertical axis, we have 42. 42. Then we have 42. Point zero. Here we have uh, 44. 44. Point zero. 44. 0.0, okay, we have 44.0, then here we have 46.0, then 48.0, right, then here uh, 50.0, right here 52.0, then lastly, 54.0. 
Alright, then here is 56, we can add 56 or a 0. So this is the scale. Okay, this is the scale we have chosen. We are going to write it, both the title and the scale here. But let's switch to the graph. Here we can do the right, okay? We can do it on top of it. Now, uh, please pay adequate attention to this. To plot your graph, you do not need uh, to be following this. This is a fraction. These are fractions, all right? So what you do, look for the scale factor. As you can see here, we are going to calculate the scale factor for, for the U axis. For the V axis, we don't have any problem because the values are already there. Okay? So how do you do it? From 40 to 42 is 2. 2 units, all right? And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 buses. So use 5 to divide 2. Use 5 to divide what? 2. So, um, 2 divided by, 2 divided by um, 5 is 0.4. So each of these is 0.4. Alright? So we are going to use 0.4 to divide each of these values. So here we have 6.70. Note that we don't start from, from 40. We start from 40. We just start from 0. So always subtract 40, 40 from each of these figures. Okay? So we have 6.7. So what is 6.7? 6.7 divided by 0.4 is 17 boxes. So you count 17 here. 17 here. You plus 17 boxes with 10. Okay? So we go to where we have 10. This is 10. Mm. There is 5 boxes, 10 boxes, uh, 15 boxes, 16, 17. So this is where we are plotting the first number. Okay, do the same thing to the second one. And 48, 48.20 minus 40 is 8.2. So 8.2 divided by what? Uh, 0.4 is 21. 21. So at point 15, we go to 21. Okay, this is point 15, which is this 5, 10, 15, 20, 21. So this is where we plot our 21. You can see there. And then the following one, the following number is what? 9.80. So we use 9.80 and not 49. 9.80 divided by 0.4. That is 25. So we go to where we have 20. Okay? This is 20. Take it. So count 25 smaller buses. Oh, that is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So this is where we have 25. This is 25. Now to the next one, which is 11.4. 11.4. Okay? Look at it, 11.4. Which is that's 51.4 minus 40. 11.4 divided by 11.4 divided by 0.4. Don't forget how we got it. 0.4 plus um, 2 divided by 5 is 0.4. So that gives us 29. 29. So go to where you have 25 and count 29 smaller buses up, up. This is 25. So count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 25. Okay? 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So this is 29. Then the last one, okay, the, the, for the 30, we have 13 point, 30 point 3, 13 point 2, sorry, 30 point 2 divided by 0 0.4 and that is 33 for 30 ok that's 10, 20, 30 1, 2, 3 that's 33 then uh, lastly for 35 we have 14.6 14.6 14 so 14.6 divided by uh, 0 0.4 that is 37 for 35 go to 37 10, 20 30, 35, 36, 37. So this is 37. So we are two plus that. You can see that with scale factor, we got our graphs without stress. You don't need to be worried about anything, okay? The next thing is to determine the slope of the graph. Find the slope, S of the graph. Okay? Then how do you get the slope? First, you draw your line of best fit. You draw your line of best fit. Okay? Look at how we are going to do it. Ensure that the line passes through the point. Okay? And the equal uh, points uh, beside each 
of, of them. Okay. Now look at this. Let's just use this one. Hmm? We use this. This is okay. It's not bad. All right. Line of best fit passing through this um, point here. Okay. Um, then let's choose. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. It's okay like this. Hmm? Um. Mm -hmm. So you can see we have uh, successfully drawn our line of best fit. Alright? You can see that the line passes through uh, the various points. Alright? So there are other points that the line pass through best. We pass through this, 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 and even this. So that this is a perfect graph. Okay? It's a very wonderful graph. Okay? Now you are to draw your uh, your big triangle, draw a, a, a large triangle. Okay, the large angle is used for finding the slope. The slope. You have to use a large, a fairly large triangle. This is a very good triangle here. Yeah. Okay? This is a good triangle. So let's draw. Let's draw perfect. Nothing is perfect, but this triangle is okay. Right? This triangle is okay. Okay? So this is the triangle we have drawn. Now the next uh, thing we have to do here is uh, okay. Um, sorry for the delay. Now the next uh, this is our triangle. Okay, so close. Okay. Now let's um, we draw it. I'm sure that this is not showing so so well. Uh, here, um, bear with me. This is uh, the triangle. I'm redrawing it again to make it okay so from here we can simply draw double lines down down here so we can see that we have drawn a double line here just to show our one and two and uh, v1 and v2 here look at it from here v1 and v2 here why here and at the vertical we have u1 and u2 Alright, so do the same here. If you do the same here, you get your V1 and U. These, these are U. These are U2. These are U2, which is the bigger U. Okay? Uh -huh. So, as you can see, we, we can now put down our values, okay? What are the values to get our slope? Slope S. Slope. Okay? So remember this is changing eh? U. Why this is changing V. This is changing U and this is changing V. Alright? So how do we get our slope? It's very easy. Our slope is changing in U. Um versus changing in changing U versus changing V. So let's calculate our slope from here. Alright? Let's calculate our slope from here. We have to find the slope. Slope is change. The two changes, okay? S slope S equals uh, U2 minus U1 over V2 minus V1. Okay? What's our U2 and what's our U1? Hmm? This is U2. Alright? U2 is 54.8. 54.8, but it's 0 0.4, 0.8. So that's 54.8. Okay? 54.80. Then minus, what is U1? U1 is 46. U1 is 46. 46.0. That's U1. Okay? Remember this are S. Then what is V? V2. Alright? V2 is 35. Why V1 is what? Uh, this 5. This is 5. Okay? So V, V1, V2 is 35. So we bring in 35.0 minus. What is our V1? V1 is here. Right? So from here to here, 5 divided by 5. So each of them is 1, 1. So this is 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So that is 8. 8 for a 0. 8 for a 0. Alright? This is how we get our slope. We can then use our calculator. Use your calculator. 0 plus. Okay, this is uh, for our slope. The, at the numerator, we have 54.8. 8 minus 46 and that is 8.8 8.80 .8. then here we have minus 5 and minus 5. this is 27.0 so 8.8 8.8 divided by 27 hmm? that is 0 0.0.32 or 0 0.33 let's just call it 0. 3, 3. And then this is the slope. Remember the slope has no units. The slope has no units. Why? Because the centimeter uh, in U will cancel the centimeter in V. Alright? Then the next question is the intercept. What is the intercept? Okay, we are told to find the intercept. So what is the intercept? Intercept C. That is where this graph touches or crosses the um, y-axis, okay, or oh, sorry, not y-axis, the u-axis, okay, because there's no y-axis, there's no x-axis in mathematics, in a physics graph. So, don't forget, here we have 0 0.4, 0 0.4, so this is 42, this is uh, 44 minus 0 0.4, hmm? that's how we get it, uh, 44 minus 0 0.4, that is for 3.6, hmm? what we have here is for 3.6. So it's 43.60 centimeters. Please don't forget that is centimeters. 43.6 centimeters. So this is how to get your slope and intercept. The rest are substitutions. Alright, substitutions. So there are no issues. We can substitute uh, S and C to the to the given uh, expressions to get what we are looking for. Okay? Now precautions. What are the precautions? First, we close our windows and doors in this laboratory. Okay, we, the windows and doors were close to avoid wind effect. Then number two, we ensure that the mass, that this mass did not touch the table. Okay, we ensure that this mass didn't touch the table. You can see that the mass is not didn't touch the table. Okay, uh, or else it didn't to error. Then we also ensured error in the bars was avoided. Okay, while reading the meter rule. Then lastly, we ensured that the meter rule was stable before taking our readings. Thank you very much uh, for watching uh, this video, the part 2 of this video. I wish you success in your academy as you go into examples. In the into example, I wish A1 in physics. Okay? So please like and share this video so that other students who are preparing for the same exam will also benefit from it. Thank you very much.